this week uh, and last week, kind of bleeding into the first part of this week, uh, it's, been, it's been real, man. Like I've taken calls that I never expected to take, right? I, I took a call yesterday from a dealer who's a good friend of mine. Um, it's a dealer who's gritty as hell. He's a guy who, when he took over the dealership, it was in receivership. He like strapped himself into the seat and just grinded and turned it into something that's really incredible. A dealership that, you know, was doing 400 used car sales a month. And, you know, he called me yesterday um, because the, the state he's in has made some big changes and those changes are impacting his business in the near and potentially long term. And, you know, and, and, and he reminded me of a couple things. One, he, you know, he, he told me that, that he was, that he had laid off that day some people that worked for him. And it's really hard. Like he's a tough guy. You could hear it in his voice. Um, it was hard for me because I've trained every salesperson, every F and I manager. I've known that dealer group for, for over half a decade, and um, I know those people, and it made things really real. And he reminded me of this, 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 this kind of meditative prayer that I stuck in here, which is that that in times like this, it's so easy for us to get focused on all of the uncontrollable variables that we can't impact. Right? I can't control the weather. I can't control the economy. I can't you know, control what my state government does tomorrow. And, and what he reminded me of is that in moments like this, it's all about us controlling the things that we can actually control. It's about us focusing relentlessly on executing the things that we can execute every single day to keep our business moving forward. And, and I think that, that what I'm, I'm inspired by or I'm starting to see is that Dealers are moving past this panic and fear to this place of what's, I mean, for lack of a better term, it's just courage and grit and serenity and they're taking action and they are executing against the controllable variables in their environment to do the best they can possibly do for their business. And what I want to start this with is another quote. It's one of my favorites. My wife started reading this book last week. It's from the book Dune and it said, fear is the mind killer. And I just want to like, like set the tone for today that there is two things that we can do. We can be crippled by the panic and the noise and the fear that's out there. And we can let that slow our creativity, slow our execution. We can make that, let that stall us, or we can push that to the side and we can say, okay, here's the things that we can do. And we're going to go do them to the absolute best of our ability. And so what we did over the last week, what I did was I've been on the phone. Some of you know, because you've been talking to me from like seven o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, talking to the dealers that I know are already doing this. And the dealers that I know are already executing things that I want to get shared in the marketplace that I want people to hear and to understand. And that I want to be actionable that you could go implement right now that can make a difference in whatever environment you're in and whatever that environment could look like tomorrow. So today on this call, what we are going to focus on is we are going to focus as a, as a crew here on the panel with the specifics of what you can do to execute a remote sale for a customer. So I want to introduce my panel to start off with. I've got some awesome people. They're NADA graduates. They're people that are, that are very progressive and are, are, are tackling this one day at a time. They're people that have really good um, operations. I know the people in some of their operations. I know the way that they've been thinking about this before COVID-19 was even a thing and the way that they've put systems and processes in place that will help them as we enter into what the next you know, day, week, month looks like. So I want to introduce, I got Cliff Gondek. He's the general manager of Jermaine Automotive, Jermaine Honda in Dublin, Ohio. I've been to that dealership. I, uh, I've visited him multiple times. So Cliff Gondek, welcome to the, uh, welcome to the call. He's an NADA Academy graduate. Cliff, who do you have with you? So to my left, I have Amanda George. She's our uh, BDC manager. And she's been with us uh, probably three to four years right cool. now. And uh, she's been an uh, integral part of uh, our success with uh, our, our entire process for that digital person and, uh, you know, taking them down that road to the sale, whether it be remote, in-store, um, really whatever way they want to go, right, giving them the choice. And then I have uh, John Johnson over to my right. He's uh, one of our managers. He's been in business a long time. How many years, John? 17. 17 years. I know he doesn't look that old. Wow. Um, but he's been in business 17 years. A lot of different positions too. So, um, you know, the managers are equally as supportive, right, to the remote remote selling, um, giving information, right, 
um, taking away some of that friction, right? Some of those pain points in, uh, you know, in that sales process. So. Awesome. Man. Well, really I big you. assets. Yeah, and we're going to dig into that. And I want uh, also with them at their team right there, you have Marlo Halliday, who's the Director of Dealer Success for the Northeast Region for AutoFi. So she's there with them and we'll be able to answer questions from that perspective of somebody that's out in the trenches with their dealers working through these things. We also have Karis McKee-Kaiser. Karis is the Digital Ops Director or Digital Operations Director at McKee Ford Lincoln in Rapid City, South Dakota. Karis, welcome to the uh, call and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. So I'm also a partner in the dealership uh, along with my dad, uh, Mark, and my brother, Matt. Um, we also have uh, three Avis budget locations in Rapid City, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and then Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, and then we also have a really big body shop. Um, that's an Abra um, auto body and glass franchisee. Um, I've been in this business for the last 13 years. So um, I, I hope I can bring something to the table. We're confident that you can. After talking to you, I'm, I can't wait to talk about some of the things that you're doing. <laughs> and we're also joined by, uh, just popped up in your video chat, Amber Bozen. Amber is the dealer success manager for Karis and her dealership. So she's the person on the Autofy side that's working with Karis and the team there to be able to, to, to really um, to help them through this process. So we wanted a couple of voices. We wanted really dealer voices and then supported by the Autofy voices and what they're doing. So let's get started and jump right into it. So thank you guys, uh, panelists, for joining. Um, here's, so over the last week, we've been calling dealers and I've been calling relentlessly, annoyingly so, dealers and asking them what they're doing. And we really got lots of really good ideas. And then we kind of got together in a room and tried to distill that down into what are the five kind of real steps or key components of how to execute a remote deal. And so you know, what we really heard over and over again, the patterns that we heard from dealers was one, the mindset shift. And we're going to dive into what this mindset shift means, what it means in a way that you think about selling cars. Then we're going to talk about customer contact and a place where there's social distancing. What does customer contact look like and how are you managing that? If, you're, if your state in the worst case scenario says that your variable ops can't be open, doesn't mean that your website's not up. And how are you managing what's happening through your digital storefront? And then we're going to talk about remote consultation. If I get a customer that doesn't want to leave their house, but um, they were in a wreck three weeks ago and they finally got their, their gap settlement and they need new transportation. How can I consult with that customer in a meaningful way using technology that's available? And then how the hell do we manage test drives, right? How are different dealers in the marketplace managing test drives in a way to help customers interact with the vehicles that they're thinking about purchase? And then finally, we're gonna talk about F&I and remote delivery. I know in the last one, test drives and remote delivery had a lot of questions. So we're gonna talk through the different ways that dealers are doing that. Now, caveat to all of this. This is a super fluid situation and things are changing by like the minute, the hour, the day. Our, my stance is check with your state dealer association all the time to find out what's happening. Check with all the resources that are out there to make sure that you understand what is available in your marketplace for you to execute. Don't get frustrated by the things that aren't available. Focus on the things that are available in your marketplace. And the best place for that information is the state dealer associations. So let's dive into the first one. First one is the mindset shift. And this is one that, um, that Cliff, I think you, you brought up to me before we even set up this webinar was thinking or rethinking the way that a BDC or an internet department operates from being solely focused on setting appointments to actually repurposing those assets or those humans as really focused on selling cars. So what I've heard over and over again from dealers, first and foremost is if you've got a CRM that is clogged with like 180 day follow-up that is automated on drip campaigns that are all about come into the dealership, come into the dealership, come into the dealership, um, I'm hearing over and over that dealers are killing those campaigns. They're literally turning off all that auto response, long-term drip campaign. And what they're focusing on is the, the members of their business development team, the members of their internet team are really focused on getting real information into the hands of a customer and very simplified formatting. That is, here's your car deal. Here's our COVID expo, you know, our COVID process. Here's how you can actually work that car deal. So I wanted to kind of open it up first to Cliff to tell me a little bit about your BDC department and how you're kind of shifting the mindset of the role that they play in, a, in an automotive purchase. Yeah. So, you know, we, we shift all the time, right? So um, because market conditions change, right? COVID-19 happens. Um, 
but you know we really want to take uh you know the 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 lane of being of service to a customer um you know in a clear concise communication right and uh you know that's how we ended up with autofy um most people use their mobile devices right most of our communications whether it be a a web lead um you know response internet lead it would come back um on the mobile device not clearly um sometimes we we're guessing what information to give them um you know and, and it wasn't uh detailed out so we weren't really doing a, a service for the customer right um, so we all know they spend 15, 16 hours online, right, doing all the research, and we still kind of cloud them with all the details or, well, you got to come in, we have to see your car, right? So, um, you know, the, there's never been a time where there's more information available for that customer, and they're more knowledgeable, but, you know, I think we're still treating them like they don't know, right? And, and that's really where we wanted to shift and partnered up with Autofy on there, too, um, because it's clear communication, um, right? Um, there's no gray area to it, and it's what the customer want, wants, right? So I, I believe if you can match that process to that customer's needs, right? They want to save time and they want information, right? And if you can provide those two things, whether it's remotely um, or they want to come in store, again, giving the customer choice, not shoving them down a certain funnel or a certain lane, right? Traditionally, we'd always, you know, you have to come in, have to do this, we can't give you a price over the phone. Um, but that's exactly what all the most successful internet businesses don't do now, right? Amazon, they give you in price. What do you want? They give you choice, right? You slide your finger and you have it, right? So, you know, us as, as an auto industry, I think have to adapt, um, to how, how that consumer is buying and what they want, right? So would you add anything to that, Amanda? I think just finding out what the customer has done, um, and then picking up kind of where they left off and figuring out what makes them comfortable and what more information they're wanting. And then just kind of, you know doing what the customer wants to do. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's spot on. Karis, what would you like to add? What are you guys doing with your BDC uh, at McKee Ford? Um, we, we actually don't have a BDC. We have a five person internet team that are cradle to grave. Um, and, and really it's, and I'll have to echo what she said was, you know, just picking up where the customer left off, trying to figure out where exactly they left off in the process and so that you're not, um, you know, backtracking. It's all about customer experience and saving time, especially in these times. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a quote I, I heard from Candace Crane that, that people change when they're either um, like, uh, I can't remember the word, but just, you know, bold and crazy or desperate. And, and what I'm seeing out there is that, is that this environment is kind of forcing us to change the way that we're thinking about things. And, you know, when you think about a BDC, the, 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 the role has always been appointments, 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 appointments. Well, what happens when maybe I can't set appointments for my dealership? And what is that when it becomes trying to pull information out of a customer to trying to push information um, to the customer. Thank you, Bree, for posting that to the panelists and attendees. People change when they're either daring or desperate. And I think that right now we've got to be both, right? And I think that right now the environment is causing us to take daring chances. And I'm really proud of us for that. So anything else about the way that you guys are thinking about leads before we move to really lead response and what we're seeing in effective lead response from dealers? Anything else on the mindset? Okay. Yeah, the other thing they, that everybody has to remember too is a transparency, right? Mm -hmm. So the, uh, you know, giving prices online or, or being able to do that deal online, right? So not that, hey, you have to come in to give payments type of thing and uh, not offering f and I products, all that, right? So again, um, transparency, being of service to the customer and just helping them down that process, whatever it is. So um, yeah. I think the key, key to a lot of it is transparency. Yeah. And I, you know, and you, you're even seeing in the chat boxes as we're talking about this, people talking about appointments that they had set like for this weekend that are already canceling, right? And, and we're seeing that people are much more leery about that and thinking about, um, about where it's going. So let's talk about, about the customer contact. One of the things that I've heard over and over from the dealers I talked to this week is that video response is what they're leaning really, really heavily on, right? They're leaning on a video to create a connection with a customer and to introduce who they are and explain things. So we kind of built out, and I'm gonna just walk through this really quickly, a, a, a best practices for video response in this time of how to kind of structure one. And then Karis and, and, and Cliff, I'd like to get your, con like your like perception on video. So 
what we're hearing is one, it's got to be personal and human, right? Like right now, it's all about being personal and human. By the way, there is a video lead response poll pop up. So everybody answer the poll. I want to find out who's using video. So what, what we're hearing that the best practices is that it's a personal introduction. It's very human. It's me, like this person here I put in the picture. She's awesome at it. I don't know what BDC she's in. I don't know where she came from, but it was sent to me by Marlo, who's there with you guys, Cliff. And the response was magic, right? She was very personal, made me feel comfortable. I was like, oh, this is awesome. And what people are now doing is that person is reiterating what their COVID policies are and really highlighting the remote sales process. So I want you to know at our dealership, our COVID policy is this. This is how we're sanitizing things. These are the precautions and steps that we're taking. We also have a remote sales process where we can do everything remotely and they kind of define that. And then if they have, like they're at the dealership, they're using enhanced vehicle information. Like, by the way, here's your car, right? Like they're doing some kind of, we're seeing and hearing fun things like that. And, and then I think that um, one of the new things that popped up last week that I hadn't heard before last week was really explaining remote consultations. By the way, we can set up a webinar where we can communicate. I can share all the information with you. You guys can ask me questions. We'll get to you know, figure out exactly what your wants and needs are. Like thinking about that old client needs analysis in a new framework. And then the really cool thing is including an interactive deal link and calling it out saying, Hey, by the way, down here in this email, I've attached your interactive deal on your specific vehicle that you can click in. You can compare down in terms. You can do all the different things. You can even apply online, get a real time decision back from a network of lenders and we'll get everything wrapped up and schedule your remote delivery. So the question I have for you guys really Karis and, and cliff and probably Amber, is, are you currently using video responses to customers? And what does that video response look like at your dealership? Like, how are you guys taking that on? So we yeah, do. absolutely. We, we, I, I should have control, I should have. Go ahead, Karis, and then we'll jump down the cliff. There we go, that's the right sure. thing. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Every single um, video is personalized to the customer that comes across um, our, our for every lead that comes across at our dealership. Um, and um, we, I, I'll have to take that back. We're not really doing highlighting the COVID policies as of, at this point. We have it on our website. We're providing a link to it, um, but that's, that's a good idea. I like that. Um, but we are definitely highlighting the remote sales process as of now, because we do have quite a few customers that are concerned with that. Um, and, and we just try to reiterate how easy it is for them to do it. And then also, uh, like you said, Joe, just providing an interactive deal link with every single video. Um, and then, then, uh, and then hopefully if the vehicle is available, we can just send them a video right away. Yeah. So, so one of the things that I, I want to reiterate is we don't want our salespeople or internet people giving COVID policies that sound like doom and gloom and terrifying where it's like, I want you to know that we have policies for COVID, right? Like we want those to be like, we've taken all these precautions. Here's what we're doing. By the way, we have this awesome new remote sales process where we can and explain all that. So I want to like reiterate on the COVID process just for all the attendees. It's not about like, oh, COVID. It's more like, hey, we've got really good processes here that we've implemented to keep our customers safe, that we're doing all that. You know, and I think that's a good thing. Wow, we've got the results back from the poll. So 21% of respondees are using a custom video for every customer. If I could make one recommendation that I think would impact how this is going to play out for people, I would say really focus on sending a custom video out to customers. Um, can video, I've seen that really decrease. They're not just shooting a, hi, I'm Joe, I'll be your salesperson video. And then dealerships that are leaving it to the salespeople discretion, as long as you're monitoring it and you're really like holding them accountable, don't just say, oh yeah, I want you to use video. And then two of your people sent out four videos last week. It's really about setting that tone with customers. All right, Cliff, how are you guys using video at Germain? Yeah, we've been using video for some time now, probably a year and a half to two years. Yeah. Um, you know, one is, one is, you know, find the right application. Um, so the video comes across correctly, right? So it sizes right. Um, it's a mistake that, that we've made along the way. Um, so find the right partner for the video would be the first thing, right? Um, because it, it has to size up to uh, whether it's on your, your phone or tablet or whatever that is. Um, and, you know, the biggest reason for the video, again, you know, people research more and more. They know what they want. But I think it becomes important of, of who they want, right? And who they want to do business with, right? So we have to humanize that process instead of, you know, 180-day follow-up, right, with, with, you know, these two-page emails and everything else. 
Um, we believe the customer really doesn't care about all that, right? So less is more kind of, they want the information, they want it fast and they want to know who. So unless we humanize that with a video, I think we're doing that customer a disservice. Um, so we've really ingrained that into, into our entire culture um, where, where salespeople, they just do it now, right? And, and once they saw the lift and how people like that, right, they like doing the video, right? So, of course, we get that first, I don't want to do videos, I'm not good, right? All, all the normal stuff, right? But then, uh, you know, the customer feels comfortable. One, it, it's not a brand new introduction when they get to the store, right? So they, they have most of their deal structure, so they know what to expect. They, they see what you look like, right? How many times does somebody come in and go, wow, I thought you looked different? than this right I bet you've heard that joke <laughs> and uh, anyway you know it, it really takes down their defenses right and uh, adds again that transparency to who they're dealing with right what that personality is right keep it upbeat very important um, and, and monitoring to your point right you have to monitor um, so people do like to go left and get a little too creative sometimes um, which you always have to watch, right? But it, yeah. but it does bring that human element to all the data that we share, right? So um, really important. Yeah. Amanda, could you say anything about that and the, the lift that we've seen? Yeah, uh, we always have customers say, you know, they love the video and always taking the video of the car because they get to see it kind of in real time when you're talking about the car and can point out specific features of the vehicle. Um, so we always have customers um, saying they love the video and um, we see a high response rate from those as well. So yeah, how much more of a response rate from a video to, to no video? What would you say a percentage is? I would say 30%. Yeah. So, so our engagement level goes way up is the point of that, right? When we send video versus no video. So uh, really important, right? Yeah. And I, I will reiterate what your salespeople felt, right? I mean, the people on this call from Autofy will all laugh because I'm really uncomfortable with video. Like I have hated being in front of a camera. I've webinars have made me uncomfortable. So I get that feeling of like discomfort, but it's like David Coggins says, right? You've got to do the things that are uncomfortable. You got to get comfortable doing things that are uncomfortable. So this is a great time to do that. So I'm going to go to the next one now, which is the newest thing I've heard. Right, this is the thing last week with, um, dealers that I was like, whoa, I haven't even heard about this. And, and dealers that are now doing remote consultation with customers. So they're using available tools like Google Hangouts or Zoom or WebEx or you know, Skype or FaceTime. And they're actually setting up remote consultations with customers to connect personally and humanly and have a conversation kind of like what we're having now. So they're using these to kind of set up. And I was asking like, well, what are you doing? I heard a couple of people be like, oh, well, we're just doing what we would have always done if we were having them at our desk, sitting down, having a cup of coffee together, right? We're reiterating our, explaining our sales process. We're talking about the test drive options. We're talking about their wants and their needs in the car. We're, we're working a car deal together where they're like sending them the auto fight deal and then they're working it together and talking through it and kind of building it on the screen. So I wanted to ask you guys, are, are you all, have you started like doing remote consultations? Are you considering it? Uh, do you have a couple people try it out? Like, what's the status with remote consultations for, for your dealerships? Uh, so we, uh, Cliff, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. So we just started uh, more and more of that, right? So, um, you know, we've been even using it in, in our follow-up process for our showroom traffic, right? So not, not just the leads or that person wants to do a, a remote purchase, um, you know, people come in, they leave, and how do we communicate with them once they leave, right? So we always, uh, you know, traditionally, we'd call them and go, hey, when can you come back? We have different cars, we have this, right? And, and instead, you know, we have data with, with the car and with payments and with finance options or an out-the-door price um, along with that. And it gives you more to talk about than that uncomfortable, hey, we got a really nice car and you want to come back, right? So, um, and, and it makes that customer feel more empowered that, hey, you know, I already met you. I know the store. I want to do business with you. You didn't have the right car. So if you can do that remotely over the phone, um, you know, we've found a lot more engagement from customers when you can provide that detailed information, comes across on their phone or on the email, right? And it makes it very interactive. And they're open to interactive more, right? They want to take your calls, right? They don't, you know, put you on mute, send you, send you to a voicemail because you're talking about relevant things with them that's, um, you know, specialized just to their deal. Yeah. So what I was hearing uh, this week was dealers saying, yeah, we're sending out the video and we're using that video to set up a remote call where it's a, you know, Google hangout. And um, I actually did one with my optometrist. I got some new glasses in 
and they were a little bit snug. They shipped them to my house instead of me picking them up. So I emailed, I was like, Hey, can I like with this, can I bring these in? They're really giving me a headache. They're too tight. It's like, we'll do a Google hangout and I'll help you shape them yourself. And he like walked me through shaping my glasses together. And then when I started talking to dealers, dealers were doing the same thing. They were using that so that they could have a salesperson, you know, at the dealership or at their home, talking to a customer at their home via a video chat with a, you know, a deal put in between them, like our autofy deal right here. And they're working through that car deal together. Karis, are, are you guys in South Dakota doing any level of remote consultation with customers? Yeah, absolutely. So I've had um, a couple of sales consultants that have been utilizing FaceTime and um, we're starting to integrate Zoom in with our process if, um, if it's applicable. Um, if, if they're not comfortable doing the video chat, then of course we can do it over the phone and we have the capability to text, um, you know, like a deal sheet to a customer so that they're looking at it in real time and we're starting to, the negotiations from there. Um, it seems to have worked out really, really well. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll obviously, we, we've been doing that for a long time and we'll obviously, I think we're set up um, for success continuing through this. That's awesome. It's great when what you're doing is kind of preparation for what's coming and it gets the team. I've, I've had a handful of dealers last week really tell me like, look, we've got the culture in place. We've got the people in place. We've got the processes in place because we've been working on this for the last year or the last two years. So it's cool to see that at your store. So let's talk about, about the next piece of this, right? The test drives. There was a ton of questions on the last call when it came to test drives, right? Like there was a lot of questions about test drives. And so I, I wanna talk a little bit about safety, right? but I also wanna talk about the different ways that I'm hearing dealers offering test drives. So are they doing no test drive? Like we're not doing any test drives. Are they taking the cars to customer's house? By the way, on this poll, you can select multiples. Uh, it's one of the ones where you can select multiples. So are they taking the vehicle to, the, are they telling customers the only place that you can do a test drive is at our dealership? You know, you got to come in, we're going to get a scan your driver's license and insurance. Are they doing it at the consumer's home and the salespeople are taking pictures of the driver's license and insurance? Are they doing neutral locations? I've heard some dealers talking about using the like, I've got Star World 30, like Star World 20 Cinemaplex by my house and the parking lot is completely empty. And so they're meeting customers there. They're explaining kind of what their, their process is around disinfection and sanitation. Or are they doing video test drives where they're doing test drives? Now, I put a screenshot in here, but I want to like be very clear. Practice, you've got to practice safety when you're doing video test drives, which means not driving like this as you're trying to film the test drive. Um, so make sure that you're doing it in a, in, a, in a safe and compliant manner. So I want to ask the panelists, we'll start with Karis this time. How are you guys managing test drives in this environment um, and kind of in this context? Yeah, I think this is probably the most difficult part of the sales process doing remotely, obviously, because um, we're in the car business. Um, and what we've been doing, we've, we've been doing all of those things. Um, you know, we've been very lucky that most deal or most people have still been coming to the dealership. Uh, we've been reiterating our, like, like you said, Joe, our sanitation and disinfecting policies with COVID-19. Um, we've been going to the consumer's home and providing them with uh, a pair of latex gloves or rubber gloves, um, along with bringing disinfectant. Um, and we've also, I've heard of a couple of sales consultants meeting on a neutral location near here as well. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the hardest part, but it's definitely doable. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's, it's a weird world, right? Like I can imagine selling cars again and showing up at a customer's house and like putting on my rubber gloves and, but you know, we've got to get creative and we've got to get outside of the box. Um, uh, for you, Cliff in, in Dayton, I mean, you guys are in a state yeah. that I think announced yesterday that they're, um, yeah, that yes. variable ops is not a, a necessary business or an essential yeah. business. Right. So how are you guys handling it? You know, we're, we're flexible, right? So we're still a, uh, considered a, a, an essential business. Um, so if somebody crashes, needs a car, their car blew up, right? We're, we're still considered under that umbrella, right? Our showrooms aren't wide open going, hey, we're, we're open during, you know, the COVID-19, um, not by any means. But we have, um, you know, we have everything posted, right? What, we, what we're capable, what we can do, and then flexible, right? So, um, you know, if we, if we had a doctor and he can't leave the, the hospital, right, but he needs a car for whatever reason, um, we'll take it to the hospital, right? If somebody wants to meet us at a neutral ground, we'll, 
we'll meet them there. Um, you know, if they have to come in, they have to come in and service them on a test drive while, while they're here. So um, really, you know, just whatever that customer needs, we're trying to be adaptable um, to make their life a little bit easier, right? So whatever that is, I think we're totally open to it. Um, you have anything to say on that, JJ? No, just uh, being open to what customer needs and wants, you know, being adaptive to, uh, to the situation and being aware of, of what's going on around us right now. So um, the more comfortable the customer is, I feel the more comfortable they'll be as in coming in and, and test driving a car. Um, and, you know, as long as we're up front on the cleanliness and uh, let the customer know that we're, we're taking all the precautions possible. So, Yeah, that's the other thing and, and good point to bring up, JJ, right? So we've... Uh, we bought every, uh, uh, you know, disinfectant that was available at every store. I, you know, I've added my service manager. I think he's been to every CVS in the state. <laughs> and uh, we leave it highly visible, right? So, they, so the consumer feels uh, comfortable right, with the environment. And uh, that goes to the car too, right? So that if we're taking a car to their, their home, right, that becomes their environment, right? Same as if they're in the store, right? Um, you know, we have disinfectant everywhere in the store and, uh, we try to provide that too within the cars, right? So that way they feel hundred percent comfortable, whether it's wiping down again, asking that customer, um, what they would like us to do, right? So instead of forcing them down the lane, like, Hey, do you want us to wipe the car down? Do you want us to do this? Do you, would you, you know, want to meet us at the movie plex? Do you want to spring to your home, your work, whatever that is, right? So I think asking the right questions also leads you down to, uh, how you can help them serve that customer. Yeah, it's, it's one of the interesting things, uh, you know, Corey from, uh, from Shaker in Connecticut, they've mandated curbside test drives. So the customer can come to the dealership, they pick up at the curb, they can drive the vehicle from there, but they can't come into the dealership. Are any of you guys doing video test drives, like actual video test drives and sending to customers? We have not. Not, not yet. Cool. I just wanted to know if that was something that was that was happening out there. Now let's, um, we're going to go past test drives. Now we're going to get to the F and I and remote delivery. I think this is the pressing piece that it felt like a big chunk of the questions on the last week's webinar were really focused on. So I want to kind of review what I've heard from dealers. So I've heard uh, kind of really three or four uh, approaches and I want your guys to tell me kind of what you're doing, not kind of, but tell me what you're doing at your dealership. So uh, one of the ways I heard was uh, uh, Brandon Stinson from Reichart uh, last week. They're doing F&I manager delivers the vehicle to the customer and reviews their F&I paperwork with the customer in person. So at their dealership currently, the F&I manager is taking the car, going over the menu, has a couple of you know sets of, uh, of contracts typed up that are you know with coverage and without coverage. And they're reviewing that paperwork with the customer. They're doing their protection presentation. And then they're signing the customer there because each one of their F&I managers is a notary and they can notarize the documents and do it that way. I've heard a lot of dealers are doing kind of the old school remote where it's F&I managers are calling the customer or video chatting the customer to review the protection options and try and sell the product. And then they're just printing the paperwork and you know, getting it to the customer somehow. Um, and then I've heard some people are using like, um, that like uh, the, there's some really cool companies that are doing outsourced notary or, or they're sending, so they're outsourcing the notary to somebody that's doing the actual paperwork, whether it's remotely through a computer or actually taking it to the customer. And then I've heard some dealers are using their dealer notary, like from their accounting department that's going to the customer. Now that was when I had a hard time wrapping my head around because I can't imagine my notary and accounting driving to a customer's house and getting the documents signed, but I'm hearing lots of creative things. So I wanted to ask, really, we'll start with, um, with, uh, with Karis. You guys are using like an outsourced notary. How, how is your remote delivery process look from, are your F&I managers calling the customers? Are you, how are you kind of handling the, the tail end of the deal that seems to be the most complicated? And before you answer, I do want to just caveat this with check with your state dealer associations. Every state is different, right? Some states, it requires wet signatures. Some states you can e-contract everything. Some states you can't technically deliver at the customer's house or you get like a 10 day period. Like there's all sorts of wacky rules out there. I don't know all of them. I'm not an expert. Karis, I want to know in South Dakota, how are you delivering cars to customers remotely? Sure. So we've been really lucky to partner with a third party uh, notary company. We've typically used this with out-of-state deliveries um, or, uh, 
deliver or co-applicants. Um, we've used this third party uh, company, but they, uh, they contract a notary in that area and that notary will go to the, to the customer's house or will meet at a, a general location, whatever location that they choose, um, and they can complete the paperwork. Now, before that happens, our F&I department they do do um, you know, a traditional remote delivery via phone, um, or they will do a Zoom as well. I, I really like Zoom for F&I because you can pull up your menu screen. I like it for, I, I'm comfortable with it now, but so F&I is reaching out and communicating with the customer and then you're having this like third party remote notary person get the document signed. What about Cliff, you guys in, in Ohio, what's the process right now on F&I for you with remote deals? Yeah, so, so we take it on a case-to-case -case basis, um, depending on location, right? I think that's the biggest dictator, which uh, tells us what path to go down, right? So if they're, if they're out of state, that's one path. You know, if they uh, just want the car brought to their house, that's a different path. And, and who does it at that point, right? So, um, but we don't miss getting that F&I person involved, right? So even if they have an uh, auto fi deal, if it's digitally, whatever it is, right? Um, so they, they get on the phone um, if they want to do a Zoom, if they want to do a FaceTime, if they're comfortable with it, right? Because that's the biggest thing with F&I is um, not only for them, they have to feel comfortable so the, so the customer feels comfortable, right? And uh, they go through their presentations as if they were in their office, right? So offering the products, needs assessment, um, they really do a great job in sticking with their process, right? Like that customer was there. So um, they schedule time, right? So, hey, this is going to take a half hour. So the, the customer doesn't think it's a five minute call and uh, is like, hey, you, I was just going over my final number. I have to go, right? So we set up the time, right? That communication again um, and, and how we can best serve the customer. Um, we, can, we FedEx paperwork, right? If we need a notary, we get it notarized. Um, you know, some people in, in banks, right, require in-store signature. Um, so we've bought plane tickets for people. Um, like, hey, you got to come in, we'll pick you up, we'll drop you back off at the airport, and then ship your car. So um, really taking it on a case-to-case -case basis, but F&I is involved, you know, just like a deal as if that customer were in the showroom. As soon as we run that deposit, F&I is like, hey, who's up next, right? Let's look on the log and let's get them involved. And they take as much time and, and again, go through that process, right, to see what that needs of the customer is. And uh, it's worked out quite well. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for your guys' insights. And then what about delivering the vehicle? Um, I know the options are kind of like at the dealership or the customer's home or neutral location. I've also heard of dealers that are like, literally, it's almost like a lot porter are just dropping the car off. They're leaving the keys and the books in it. And then they're doing a remote deep dive delivery afterwards. Um, how are you guys handling the delivery? Karis, you're shaking head, so why don't you jump in? How are you handling the physical delivery of the vehicle? I know that the OEMs are requiring us to cover like pages of information with the customer as part of that delivery process. Mm -hmm. So how are you handling to make sure that you're delivering against the, the necessary information that the customer needs to enjoy their ownership? Sure. So um, with, with a new vehicle, it's a, a little bit easier. Usually we have a like vehicle on our lot. Uh, they jump on a FaceTime or um, a Zoom and um, or send a video, a pers again, a personalized video uh, going over the high points of the vehicle. And then whatever, um, the, whatever uh, questions the customer has that's more, you know, very specific or deep diving, um, they can do that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, for pre-owned vehicles, um, it's usually not that um, intense. Um, but, but they try to do their best with, um, with that vehicle. That's usually on a, on a one-on-one -on -one basis with, with questions from the customer. I think this is super interesting. I just got a question that I wanted to throw your way from a handful of people inside of the Q and A right now. Uh, the question was, do you as a panel advocate for a single point of contact with this customer going through this process? Or are you comfortable splitting that up to a internet seller, BDC rep and a salesperson and a sales manager and F&I manager? Like what, what, are you, like, what are you advocating for right now? What do you think is the right way to do it? So, you know, it, it, it depends on, um, I guess, what, what that customer wants to do. So we've, we've switched up a, a little bit within that process. of uh, So we do have a BDC. 
Um, and if somebody just wants to buy the car, like, hey, I've been looking for this, you know, um, you know, Honda Accord, it's perfect, the color, everything about it, right? Can I give you the money? Can we go over terms, right? And by the way, I want it shipped to me, right? So we keep that person involved with one of our agents, right? And they take it A to Z, right? But at that point, we still turn it over to F&I. Finance gets involved, does their process, calls them, um, does the products on there. Um, you know, and, and you know, if, if they want to come in or, or do that, right, they, they go with the salesperson and, and then the F&I. Um, so it's really on a case-to-case -case basis of, of what it is. And, you know, new car versus used car makes a difference. Um, so every one is a little bit different with that. Uh, Karis, how about at your store? How, how are you guys handling? Are you moving towards a one point of contact or is it still very much the kind of traditional system? What seems to be working for you guys? Um, so we, again, we don't have a BDC. Uh, we have internet sales consultants that take it from um, first point of contact all the way to F&I. Um, that's when we bring in the F&I person, but I'll have to um, agree with Cliff. It's, it's really on a case by case basis, whether you get more people involved. Um, I think the idea is to try to get, you know, limit the contact to just um, as few people as possible to make the customer feel comfortable. But, um, you know, it's, it's all going to be on a case by case basis. Awesome. Well, guys, I think we, here's one of the proudest moments I've had in a webinar. It is exactly 1145 and we're at the end of this presentation piece. And now we're going to open it up for a Reddit style. Ask me anything. This is the time that you as the, as the attendees can ask whatever questions you want. Bree will be flinging them over to me in the panel and we will, um, so use the Q and A, I think it should be maybe over here. So use the Q and A, fill out your questions and me and the panel are gonna do our best to answer them. Now I'm gonna caveat once again, these are our opinions, these are our perspectives and, um, and we'll do our best to answer them uh, as uh, from the heart, so. All right, Joe, we got our, our first question coming in from Ashley, mm -hmm. asking for any advice for luxury brands as they navigate uh, the current health crisis. Yeah, so um, I got a, you know, a, a couple of viewpoints. I actually think I want to ask maybe Amber or Marlo, who are working with our, our, our dealers in the field. They're working with all makes and models, all brands. Are you seeing any difference between the, um, the, the luxury brands approach here versus a more traditional brand? And any advice for luxury dealers? And then I'll give you my perspective. What up, Marlo? <laughs> So I am seeing a bit of a difference um, between luxury brands. Um, luxury brands is a little more white glove where they're, uh, if the person is still coming in store, they're cradling it a little bit more um, and kind of working that deal a little bit softer approach. Um, but it's usually one person that will take this cradle to grave and they go above and beyond what they need to do. So if the person wants to meet at the house, cause that's where they're comfortable, they'll meet there. If they want to meet at a coffee shop or an empty parking lot. They'll go there. They'll do what the customer wants to do and what's what the customer is ultimately comfortable with. Awesome. Mar Marlo, what are you seeing? I would definitely mirror that. I think that possibly some of the high lines have already had this experience where they're used to doing one point of contact, um, sort of that empowered salesperson to go as far as they can um, through desking and so forth, and sometimes even F&I presentation, as well as I think they're also maybe a little more adept already at remote deliveries. So I think they've had prior experience to this just based on their demographic um, and the demands of that, that customer for the high line. Yeah, and, and, you know, I've been pretty involved with uh, a, a pilot for uh, a, an American luxury brand, uh, Lincoln Motors, and been really impressed with the way that their dealers have for the last, you know, six months, last two years, really adopting an effortless process for their customers. They even call it the effortless process. And we've really worked to, to empower them to remove every friction point they can for that customer. Whether it's a buyer like me who wanna, might wanna buy from my sofa and have you bring my you know, new Corsair to my driveway, or it's my dad who's buying his third navigator and he wants everything done, but he wants to come in and drive the two of them because he can't tell the difference between the black label and the regular one. So I think that um, we're seeing dealers really uh, on the luxury side, I think diving a little bit, maybe faster and a little bit deeper because they've been doing it for a while with their OEMs. Um, so Joe, we got another uh, really great question that came in from Grant Dahl. 
How are dealerships that are currently shut down handling their internet leads? We know that websites are still up, leads are still coming in. What are dealers doing to manage that process? Yeah, so I, I think this is a big concern for everyone. I, you know, Cliff, I know that you guys are kind of in that state right now we in are. Ohio. How are you guys handling it? And then I'll share what I'm hearing from other dealers. So right now we have our agents working from home on split shifts throughout the day. Um, so we are still communicating with customers, giving them pricing and stuff like that. Um, I'm here at the dealership, so I'm able to send them pricing and then they can work that deal through Autofy, you know, email the link, text the link, and also just let them know what we can do. Um, if you want us to bring the car to you, we will do that. If you want um, to, you know, come in and test drive the car, we can do whatever you want to do, but letting them know that we're open to doing what the customer wants. And then they communicate that with me here at the store so that I can get um, things in place. That's a, that's a good answer. You know, we've got folks from NADA on here. I know that they've been advocating incredibly hard uh, to both the, the federal level and then really pushing down into the state level. I saw an interview with Rhett Reichardt, the chair of NADA on CBT. And it was, it was inspiring to hear him getting gritty and bulldoggy about the ability of car dealers to, to fight through this and, and keep our industry going. Um, and I think that when you look at the states that are probably the most restrictive right now, there's a good list and I will post it to LinkedIn after this, uh, or a good link to uh, effectively what's happening with the secretaries of state in all states and who's staying open so that they can register cars, who's closing. The, the key for me is to get the information that's out there and then to find the ways in your environment that you can continue to operate your business. I'm a firm believer that, you know, shutting down our physical location doesn't mean ceasing operations. It's like my optometrist. I can't go and get my glasses fitted, but I sure as heck can buy a new pair on their website right now. And I think that for us in the car business, it's doing everything we can in those states, like in Michigan, where the Secretary of State isn't going to register cars until April. Well, Michigan dealers are getting, you know, one, they're banding together to, you know, uh, to approach the state government to try and challenge some of these, the, 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 you know, these laws or these, these rulings or these decisions, but they're also working creatively to find ways to get customers that need transportation, transportation. I had a dealer tell me yesterday on the call, he's like, I, you know, I got a doctor who needs to be able to get back and forth to the hospital who totaled their car a week before this all went down. And I'm in the process, I ordered them a car, it's gonna be here in two days, they're in a rental right now. Like that person should be able to get their car and they're getting creative in finding their ways to get those cars. So for me, in states that are completely shut down, it's, it's reach out to your local dealers association. Ask them, what can I do? What am I allowed to do? Because I'm going to do everything I'm allowed to do to keep getting cars into the, into the, into getting customers into transportation to get them back and forth to wherever they need to go. So I think that, um, that for my advice is check with your state dealer association and, um, and do whatever they will allow you to do. So Joe, we got, we got another couple of great questions here. So uh, Lori Foster mentioned in the chat that traffic online, uh, she would think traffic online is stable as people have time, but we need to address these customers differently. So um, there's some really great resources out there. Dealer Inspire is posting daily updates. Uh, and Lori, that's exactly what they're seeing is, is internet traffic is continuing to maintain. Um, we're also seeing that here at Autofy. Mm -hmm. Now, Jason Hine asked a question to follow up on that. So this is really tactical. Mm -hmm. How are you initiating the first video call? Lead comes in, then what? Is it as simple as including an offer to set up a call in the first response? So, so I'm going to answer Lori's first, which Lori, hashtag better together. I, I love you. Thank you for joining this webinar. Um, so first off, you know, when it comes to, to internet traffic, I mean, we're seeing an increase in some situations like in Autofy. I mean, I think we're up 6% 6 per, 6 over last week, which was up a percentage over the week before of interaction and utilization. So if you look at our graph of customers using it, People are sitting at home, they're still looking at cars. I'm still looking at glasses, right? Like people are still shopping. I'm getting text messages. I get a text message from the Bill Knight Lincoln team on Sunday that they had sold a car completely remotely to a customer that needed a car and wanted to buy it, but didn't want to come into the dealership. So, uh, you know, I, we're, we're seeing that traffic increase. The follow-up to that on how are dealers responding that seems really, really strong. Um, it's not about sending an, like a, a first email to set up a video. It's about sending a video in the first email to introduce your dealership and what your team is doing. 
The second follow, like the follow to that is a call, a web chat, a FaceTime, a something where we can sit down if the customer needs that level of consultation. If they're like me and their glasses are giving them a headache, let's get on a webinar and we'll solve it together. If they're like, no, I just want a text message and you send me information, let's do that. I mean, last week you had Jack Care from Pat Milliken who was like, I sold a car last week to a customer that I never physically talked to. I didn't speak to her. I didn't web chat with her. I didn't video chat with her. We text message the entire time until she scheduled the delivery. And when we delivered it, she was like, that was so awesome. I didn't really want to talk to anybody, but you were awesome. And then she sent her friend to them who didn't want a text message. She wanted to come in and drive like four cars and compare them. So I think it's about being adaptable. I think the first response we send out should be a video saying, I'm Joe, I'm gonna take great care of you. We've implemented really good policies when it comes to sanitation. We also have a completely remote selling process where we can help you with your transportation needs. In fact, I've attached a link here beneath this email where you can click to see an actual car deal on the vehicle that you submitted your lead on. You can compare lease to finance, you can compare the, you know, the down, the term, you can even apply, get an approval back from a network of lenders and we can do everything together without you ever having to step foot out of your house. And I think that that should be our first response and should build confidence. It should create a human connection and it should help us to figure out that social distance doesn't mean socially disconnected. And, you know, I, for me, that's the way to do that. So Joe, uh, Pam just posted that Route One will be conducting dealer training every Monday and Wednesday now through April for remote e-signing and training. So uh, dealers are looking for some solutions there. Pam, thanks for that heads up. Uh, visit uh, route1.com for more information. Yeah, so we've got a great question that came in here from Derek Newton, who uh, is Newt. what up, dude? in the industry, but he brings up a really good point. So this question is, I'm curious how dealers are dealing with the security side of things. Is this something that is on dealers' minds at all? How do they address remote users at this time? So Joe, I'll let you uh, go ahead yeah. and so for me, first off, I think that you need to investigate the companies that you're working with, right? It's one of the things that AutoFi that we really pride ourselves on is we're SOC 2 type 2 compliant, <clears throat> meaning we don't only have a massive set of criteria that we have to agree to. We're regularly audited to make sure that we are, from a security perspective, adhering to that. We have a chief information security officer. So for us as a company, it's an important part of our kind of like fabric of who we are. If I'm a dealer in this space, if I put my GM hat back on, and Derek Newton, by the way, was my finance income development rep when I was a GM. So if I put my GM hat back on and I think about it from a dealer perspective, for me, what I would be doing is making sure that the companies I'm working with from a tech perspective are doing everything they can around data security to make sure that I'm not putting myself at some level of risk. On people security, <clears throat> I would execute the best practices from an HR perspective to make sure that we're doing things like verifying identity before we're doing remote test drives, that, that we are, we're keeping tabs on, on our remote workforce, where they are, what they're doing, and how they're doing it. You know, Cliff, you brought up a good point with like, or I think it was Cliff, maybe somebody uh, earlier this week about using Zoom so that we can have all of our teams in their houses making phone calls and we can see what's going on. Uh, so I think that... Um, that for me, it's about, it's about working with reputable companies that have really good security infrastructure and verifying that and vetting that as part of your tech process at your dealership. And two, making sure that you're keeping people safe by executing really good HR policies around remote transactions and remote interactions. All right, Joe, we've got time for, for one last question. And uh, Cliff, I'm gonna pass this one over to you, my friend. So I'm gonna mush two together. So All this right. is from Alexandra, she says, I work in a very old school type of dealership. Managers um, want, really want us to make the appointment and get the customers in the store. Now, because of COVID, things are changing. What suggestions do you have for, uh, for sales reps that are working in dealerships that are still operating off of a get them in, get them in? And then to yeah. that point with uh, Paul is asking, is there a common skill set amongst high performing salespeople that are utilizing digital retail tools for remote selling that dealerships should really focus as they look to hire and develop the next generation of talent? So we know that although this time is very scary, it's also a clean slate opportunity. It's an opportunity for dealers to really think about their people strategy. So Cliff would love to hear how you'd answer those two questions. 
Yeah, so um, half of my managers, it's, it's interesting, right? Because they are uh, probably as old school as, as you can get, right? And, uh, you know, I've been down this road for, for a couple of years and that transition and the friction from them of like, hey, we still got to get them in. I'm not going to give a price. Are you crazy, right? And I'm like, no, you guys are crazy, right? So, um, you know, but, but having the support of the, of the other ones, here um, kind of help change that. But what really changes that is when, you know, whether it's a GM, a GSM, whoever it is, can, can show and lead, right? So can give an example that can actually do that type of deal using a digital application and like, wow, that was easy, right? So I think you have to give even the old school guys examples of how easy it is, right? So um, old car people, right? They don't believe anyone, right? They don't believe customers. They don't believe employees. They don't believe auctions, right? They're, they're always skeptical, right? So I think if you can show them and demonstrate, right, how to learn that tool and then that actual people do use it, right? And it's like easier and simpler, right? It, it kind of brings it down, but you have to invest time and energy to, to shift their mindset, right? So you either have to, you know, change, change that person's behavior or in the end, you have to change the person, right? So it uh, seems so blunt on that one, but it's very true, right? So um, to answer the first question. And then the second question, salespeople, um, you know, we have some superstars on there, um, some that we wouldn't expect would be good with video or, or doing that type of transaction. Um, and I think that's a trial and error and a coaching, um, but also setting up um, expectations, right? What do we want you to say? Kind of outlining, um, you know, what they're supposed to do. If you go, hey, just shoot this video, and a salesperson never shot a video, they'll go, oh, what do I say, what do I do, right? Very uncomfortable. They're gonna give you, you know, feedback that that was horrible, it doesn't work, I don't wanna do it, right? So I think a lot of it lies within us and our control on how we train them and support them and correct the behavior, right? It all comes down to the behavior, whether it's the manager question um, or the salesperson question, right? So we have to help support support and train, right? And, and also have it clearly written out and spelled out what the expectation is. Thank you so much, Cliff. And Marlo, if you don't mind addressing the question on what are the soft skills? You know, you train thousands of dealership personnel across the U.S., uh, well, sorry, across the Northeast, but what are you seeing? What are the soft skills that make somebody more successful as dealers come back online and have an opportunity to uh, rehire in talent? I think the number one thing that I'm seeing is just a different level of authenticity and genuineness. Um, there's much, much less of canned responses. Uh, I definitely definitely have dealers that do a really great job where every single lead is really read, digested before. It's not just that rush, pick up the phone, send the email. They're actually digesting it, making a plan. And then when they pick up the phone or they send the email, it's custom. It's literally just addressing. So I'm seeing a much higher level of um, just taking a breather, really reading. And exactly what Cliff has been saying is you have to go one by one. What does this person want? And a lot of times now with our technology, we know exactly what they want. They're telling us, they're showing us. We see that pathway and they're actually digesting it before they start the conversation so we don't have the disconnect. That's the number one thing is to slow down, read, deal with the jewels that you're given, like actually digest that before talking to them. That's awesome. Okay, we have hit an hour. I want to thank this panel and I want to thank you attendees for showing up for this. It still blows my mind that we have over 550 people on here in my living room. And I want you to know we're going to keep these conversations going. If your questions didn't get answered, we will email you answers. If you want to set up a demo to see what our technology is, the number and the email is on here. Once again, panelists, thank you so much for coming. For those of you like Lori and Dave Hassett and Derek Newton and everybody on the line, I appreciate you guys showing up for this. Thanks for coming to my living room. And I'll see you next week when we discuss selling to service customers during this time, it's going to get more important and we're going to dig into how to do it. Hope to see you then. Thanks a ton.